All right, we are live and just a minute or a couple of minutes past nine. So I wanna say I'm sorry for anybody who's already online, already joined us live. Let's just wait a couple of minutes here before we kick in. And excited to spend some time with you and be with all of you. All right. So just gonna wait. Um, for a couple of people to join. Of course, tonight we are on a very special mission because we're praying for a very special nation, going through some very troubling times. So let's see how we do here. All right. Hi Bala, I'm gonna greet everybody who joins <laughs> by name possibly. But again, like I said, uh, if, you're, uh, if you've joined us, thank you so much for joining in. Today we're doing a live session, specifically to pray for uh, India, to, for, for what India is going through and to pray for Goa. And uh, to those that are joining in, I guess it's worth repeating, I'll repeat this a couple of times as well. It's worth repeating that. It's just, you know, to, to, to try and do something about it from this far away is never, is never, never enough. I always feel like uh, we can't do enough when we're sitting so far away, sometimes in Singapore. Of course, the world is disconnected at this point in time. So there's not a whole lot you can do about anything. In fact, I think uh, a lot of the times we used to tell people, do what, you know, um, what you can control. But with this pandemic and where we're sitting, it can be so hard because we don't know. We're so not in control um, of anything, right? And this is why we look to a great God, an awesome God, a wonderful God that blesses, that heals, that restores, does, that does so many good things. We just look to Him uh, for so much in our lives. So once again, for those of you who've joined on Facebook, so excited that you're here. Uh, it's gonna look a, f a bit funny on Facebook. So just to keep it really real and tell you what to expect, uh, tonight tonight is a prayer session. First and foremost, uh, we'll spend some time looking at the Word and seeing what God uh, has to say uh, to us in this time. God is always speaking. God has spoken to a lot, to a lot of people um, who sometimes say, hey, I can't hear God or I'd like to hear more from God. How do I hear God? How do I listen for Him? How do I hear His voice? God has spoken um, and God has spoken and people have written stuff down and, and it's all there for us, laid out for us in His Word. I love, uh, I was doing a little podcast and I spoke about the fact that the Word is just, you know, when, when somebody says, I'm going to give you my Word, I want to keep my Word to you. What, what does that make you think of? It makes you think of a promise, right? So if you take the Bible and you take it and you just say, wow, all this is God's promise. This is God's Word to me. Uh, so it's God's promise. Then I should be able to receive those promises. I should be able to take those promises and make them applicable to my life. Um, there's a beautiful verse um, where, you know, throughout the Bible, God speaks to his children. God speaks to the people that will listen. God speaks to the people that will call on him. Um, you know, God never ignores anyone. I don't think God's ever ignored people uh, because the Bible clearly tells us that, you know, this man, this poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all his trouble, from all his afflictions, from all his distresses. So if you're feeling afflicted today, if you're feeling distressed, no matter what is distressing you, no matter, no matter what's stressing you out, God is able to set you free, deliver you from every destruction, from every evil. So let's wait a couple of minutes just to um, get a few more people to join in. Thank you very much. Free Manny has joined us. Uh, my dad is on here. Viveka's here. Thank you very much for joining. And I think a few more here. Like, like I said again, this is, this is a prayer session for friends. This is a prayer session because, like we said, we're so out of control. But there is someone who does control. Um, who is able to control so much more if we'll only let him. If we'll only give him control. If we'll only turn to him. He's able, um, he actually says, you know, if only they would turn to me and I would heal them. So sometimes it just takes us to change our focus 
because sometimes we can be so focused on what the news is telling us and what we're being fed every day with the headlines. We can be so bogged down by everything we hear and see that we don't turn to him. We don't change our focus. And I think that's all that God wants sometimes. He just wants us to turn our focus to him. When we can do nothing, he wants us to remember, hey, I can do all things. So um, I love sometimes, you know, it's insane because the way the pandemic is shaped at this point, there's not a lot that any of us can do, but we, we know somebody that can. So today was really about just saying, let's gather online. Let's turn to a God that does heal, that does save, that does set free, and that is willing. Uh, that is, that this is a big thing for me. You know, the Bible says, I, Jesus says, I am willing. There's never a time. It's incredible. Um, today, we'll, before I get into anything, and I, and I have a I have a tendency for the... Hi, Kerry. Kerry's watching. I love it. Welcome, Kerry. For anybody watching, you'll know that I have a tendency to talk at a million miles a minute sometimes, right? So today's not going to be like that. It's going to feel maybe a little bit choppy because, you know, Facebook got it, got it at a different angle. Instagram's at a different angle, and that's okay. But more than anything else, this is a prayer session between friends. Is that okay? So go ahead and, and send a comment, type in something, chat with me uh, as we go through the session. And I, and I promise to try and acknowledge as many as I can. I promise to try and listen, to try and watch that chat box uh, and just talk to as many as I can. Tonight, let this be about being in the moment. Let this session be about, you know, and probably just going to go maximum an hour, okay? So about 40 minutes now, just about 40 minutes um, together. But let's just spend, let's just take this time to turn to a good, good father. I think it's very, very um, important that we realize that God, before anything else, and, and God is a lot of things, uh, the Bible calls God all powerful. And it's very good for us to dwell on that. The Bible calls God the healer. The Bible calls God the savior. And we need him to play all these roles in our life, which is why we're turning to him tonight. But more than anything, the Bible talks, us, talks to us as God being our Father. In fact, that's what um, Jesus taught us. So Jesus made no mistake of who he was. He made no mistake telling us who he was. Uh, when he walked the planet, he said, you know, I'm yeah, literally he, he told people who he was. And, and the Bible tells us clearly, if we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will be saved. Look to him and you will be saved. Look to him and be radiant. So that's what we're doing today. We're looking to him. To save, we're looking to him to heal. We're looking to him to touch. Um, today we'll do a couple of things uh, in this session. One thing we're going to do right away is again make no mistake. We're praying for India. We're praying for Goa. Uh, why? <laughs> because we again, it's it's a session between friends. Today I invited anyone, anyone who just wants to be a part of this prayer session to just get online and pray with us. Uh, the Bible clearly tells us when two or three are gathered in my name. I am there in the midst. So you better believe that on this session tonight, you know, there's a good, good God just being with us, just holding us, just loving on us, just taking care of us. And all you want to do is just enjoy the session. Just be in, just be aware that there is a father who loves you, um, a heavenly father who loves you, a father that created you on the palm of his hand. You know, uh, a lot of the times you are such a unique individual and sometimes we walk through life without knowing it, but there's only one of you. And you were made by a loving and good God. And to those of you who are parents online, you better believe, right? When you have children, you know it's a miracle. You just know. Even though you say, hey, I created the kids. No, you know it's a miracle. When you have kids, you know you can look into your son's eyes and you go, wow, you know, that's, that's just, that's just God-given. You have these moments. And I, and I want you to just comment if, I'm, uh, you know, if, if, if this is making sense to you. So, um, so yes, we're praying for Goa. And God is going through insanity right now. We've got friends that are telling us about what's going on. We've got friends there that are, that are going live uh, and talking about their experience in the hospitals. There are no beds. Um, there are no, there, there, there's not enough ventilators for sure. And you can see the, the nation and what's being reported. Uh, so we are praying for God. We're praying for our friends. And even though Katya and myself, my wife Katya and myself, we can't be there. We are with you in spirit, you know, and I hope that I don't know if that means a lot because I know that it's never possible to feel that same way unless you're there and you're experiencing it. And I want to acknowledge that. But we are with you in spirit. Uh, we were born in Goa, my, both my wife and I. Um, we have close friends there and they and they and they talk to us and they um, they tell us what's going on. Uh, my wife stays in touch with 
all our friends and 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 has and so and and just has a finger on the pulse on everything that's going on with Goa. So um so yes, lots of videos. Thank you, thank you, Manny. Uh, lots of videos uh, are being sent. Lots uh, tonight. Today is not only the hospitals. It's not just the COVID, but today uh, Goa is Goa's hit with a cyclone as well. So we're watching and and waiting to see uh, what's happening. But remember that when you don't know what to do, when you're not in control, just like we're not, and I know that the people of Goa as well sitting there, and there's not a lot of things in their control. There's so much, and then they, see, they can see things going on around them, and all we're doing tonight is praying for them. Is that okay? So that's all we're doing. We're gathering together to pray for Goa. We're getting, gathering together to pray for India, who's hit by pretty much the worst of, of the pandemic globally and, that, and they're going through it at the moment and, it, and it's heartbreaking to see all the stories and news. So let's just pray for them because we're going to believe and the Bible clearly tells us and, and Jesus when he walked the planet, he said, be it unto you as you believe. Be it unto you as you believe. So what does that mean? That's a very powerful statement right there. It, it means that if you believe that God doesn't heal, then you're going to see results like that. If you believe that God is, is an angry God and he's judging Goa or India, then you're gonna see results like that play out. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just psychology, it's science. It's, uh, but, but more than that, you know, Jesus put it very clearly, he said, be it unto you as you believe. So what are we choosing to believe? Uh, Jesus told us that he came in the image of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the clearest image of God. And what did Jesus do when he walked the planet? Well, he never once said to a person, I'm going to bring some sickness on you. In fact, he healed every disease. He healed every sickness. The Bible clearly tells us that in all the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Bible just says, wherever he went, Jesus healed everybody who was oppressed, everybody who was going through sickness, everybody that was going through heartache, everybody that was from the blind to the maimed to the lame, everybody got their healing. There was not one instance where Jesus turned and said, sorry, can't do it. You've got a lot of sin in your life. Now go ahead and, and, and pray for three hours. And when, you, when you're cleansed, uh, come back and receive your healing. Not one instance. And yet, why do we sometimes buy into the fact that sometimes God heals, sometimes he doesn't? Not true, my friend. The, the Bible tells us God always heals. Jesus healed everyone who came to him. And to those who didn't come to him, what could he do? You know, um, God's not going to force his healing on you. But if you, but, but the Bible tells us those who turn to the Lord, those, those who look to him, the Bible says, turn to me. They, if only they would turn to me to heal them. So tonight we're going to turn to him and ask him to heal those. So tonight, if you're watching on behalf of a friend, invite that friend. Or if you're watching on behalf of a friend and you want to submit a prayer request, just type that into the comments. I'm going to keep my eyes on the comments. I'm going to keep my eyes on as much as I can, right? I'm going to keep my eyes on the comments um, as well as we're going. So let me just quickly figure that out on Facebook Live as well. So we are keeping our eyes on Jesus. I love that. Thank you, Manny, for all your amazing comments and for the encouragement as, as, I, as I continue to, as we continue to, to speak. Tonight, we're going to use a couple of things. Uh, you can grab your phone. It's filled with pictures of my wife and kids, of course. But you can grab your phone. And when I say the Bible says, right, uh, you don't have to believe me, right? So, so because I'm not going to give you every single verse uh, but what I want you to do is just type the, this, the, the, the words I'm saying into Google if you want, and you'll see the verse come up. Because, you know, that, and isn't that amazing? That's what you can do today, right? You can literally type in the words I'm saying, and the, and the right verse will pop up, or the Bible verse will pop up. So you'll know that I'm really preaching from the Bible. We're going we're gonna to base it on God's Word. Remember, God's Word is His promise to us. When somebody says, hey, um, you know, I'm keeping my word right? Uh, it's, it's a normal English phrase we use, right? I'm keeping my word. God keeps his word because his word is his promise to us. So if we want to know if God heals, you get into his word and you receive the promises of healing. If you want to know if God sets you free from depression, you get into the word and see what God has to say about depression. If you, if you want to get, um, if you want to, you want to have a better married life, you get into the word and see what God says about marriage. Of course, we're not going to do all that today. Today is going to be about Goa. It's going to be about India. It's going to be about praying for those who are sick. It's going to be about those who are praying, who have contracted COVID and are in the hospitals. If anybody has a prayer request, just tell us. We're going to pray for everybody in the hospital today, um, no matter where they are. And just ask God to touch, to heal, to restore, to set free. But if you have somebody that you'd like to pray for individually, 
please let us know and I'll be very happy to pray for them individually and we'll take some time to do that. We're also going to pray for protection. Does God protect his people? 100%. Yes, he does. And we're going to talk about a couple of Psalms that I've always used with my family uh, and that I cling to because when we take God at his word, God respects that. God loves that. Um, and, and that's what God gave it to us. There's a beautiful verse in, uh, there's a beautiful story right in the old testament where god is leading his people um you know they've, they've spent 40 years you know in the wilderness or, or in the desert and why did they do that because they didn't have the faith to come into the land when god told them to so there's this incredible story where moses has been with them and been their leader in the you know throughout their wandering in the wilderness but it's now time to go in but this time God chooses another man, a younger man than Moses that's going to lead them in. So, um, so Moses, so we're going to talk about when Moses has just passed and we're, we're talking about the new leader that God chose, that God chose to lead his people into the promised land. Now the prom, now I, I love this because I was watching the chosen. If those of you are fans of the chosen episode, um, four, a few minutes ago and something really powerful came up where, you know, we said God keeps his promises, um, but, but God speaks to everybody individually, right? So you want to have your own relationship with God. So here's this man, this leader that jo God has chosen, and his name is Joshua. And if you look at the word Joshua, it's, it's actually a form of Yehoshua, which actually means, which actually is the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Uh, and it actually means God saves. So it's almost like all of us are going through our own wilderness journey sometimes, right? But the God leading his people into a promised land is God healing his people, God saving his people, God giving his people a brand new life, God giving his people a new purpose, a new destiny. So when you want to move out of all the trouble that you're in and you want to go into God's protection, God's healing, God's favor, that's what we're doing today. And there's a very unique point where Joshua is reading God's word. And, and God tells him, don't let this, this book of the law or this book you're reading shall not depart from your mouth, from your mouth. Now, there's a reason for that, because God wants you to vocalize his promises. God wants you to speak his word instead of speaking COVID, instead of speaking about, about, about things. And I know it's not easy. I mean, we're living in a world where you're just surrounded by them. But if you'll just take your eyes for a moment or your mouth out of that, out of the other things and feed on his word and speak out his word. Let's listen to what God, God says. So God's talking to Joshua and he says, this book of the law shall not, de you know, it shall not depart from your mouth. It won't depart from your mouth. So you've got to keep speaking my word, but you will meditate on it day and night. That means just keep speaking, keep meditating on his word day and night. Um, for then, so that you might observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You will have good success in whatever you do. And then he says a very incredible one, which I love. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Have I not commanded you? And today I kind of feel that, that God's saying, have I not given you my word? Have I not commanded you what to do in my word? So today, I guess, instead of, instead of feeling helpless, instead of feeling controlled, instead of feeling depressed by all the stuff, what can you control? God speaking to somebody today and saying, have I not commanded you? Have I not given you the Bible? Open it and start to speak my word and start to speak out loud. And you'll see and, and, and you will see and you will make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. You'll start to prosper in your spirit, in your soul, and you'll start to have good success. Good things will start to come out um, of your life. So that's what we're going to do. So tonight we're really uh, as our prayers. We're going to speak his word. We're just going to gather together. And, and the first thing I want to do is I actually ask you to go to the Holy Bible. So if you've got the app, the Holy Bible, right? You all probably know that. But if you don't, just go into the Holy Bible and get it. And if you go into the read, you'll see all these different. And if you haven't got this yet, oh my gosh, it's the most incredible resource. Obviously, it has the Bible in every single translation just at your fingertips. And, and, and you can just switch. Uh, you can actually just switch versions. Yeah, update later. But you can just switch versions and, and read through different uh, versions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read something called the New King James Version. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the New King James Version. I'm going to go to a Bible. Now, if you're 
wondering what I'm doing, it's just you can open any Bible, okay? Any Bible that you have next to you. If you have a physical Bible, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to go through a very specific psalm, and we're going to pray that together, if that's okay. But we're going to do it uh, with a different spirit. So so let's pray this, first of all, for Goa, right now, right now. And the, and the psalm that I'm going to pray, and we're going to pray together, is called Psalm 91. Okay, Psalm 91. So go ahead, and when you've, and when you've got Psalm 91 opened up on your Bible, on your phone, um, you know, and it says the safety of abiding in God, in the presence of God. So, so Psalm 91, that's what we're on. So go ahead, and if you've got a physical Bible, open Psalm 91. But if you've got a, um, a phone Bible, a phone app, that's okay as well. Go to Psalm 91, and let's do this together. So this is how we're going to pray tonight, okay? We're gonna, it's not going to be just a ton of, of, of saying the same thing. It's just going to be about, let's chew on what God is saying to us. And today, if you don't mind, let's take every line. And when the line comes up, what I want you to do, how, how God says to meditate on his words is, you, you'll, see that, you'll see that every time you speak a line, your brain will give you a picture. And that's a very, very powerful thing. Our brains are wired like that to receive pictures. So I teach psychology, right? I teach uh, positive thinking. But more than anything else, just, just, read, just read through it. And you'll see that every line will bring you a picture. Every line will. It's just, it's just normal. That's how our brain, that's how God designed a great God, a good God designed our brains. So when you're reading it, you're going to see a picture. And it's very important that you do. And, and if you don't, just keep, keep reading. And, and we're going to just meditate on each verse. All right. Now I call this one, or God called this one, his psalm of protection. In fact, you ask um, anybody who knows the word and they'll tell you that this psalm, Psalm 91, is called the Psalm of Protection. How I love to remember it. Uh, and, and, and Manny just spoke about uh, Pastor Prince. I was listening to Pastor Prince today, of course, in church. And, how, and he called it that, I, and I love that. And he said, um, whenever you dial an emergency, right, um, in, in, the, in the U.S., it's 911. It's exactly the same. So, so 91, Psalm 91, verse 1, is your emergency number. So what do you want to do when you're stressed? 911. What do you want to do when you are feeling attacked? 911. Yes, I said the words feeling attacked. And if somebody's feeling attacked right now in, in some way or feeling depressed or feeling anxious, remember that this has the power to set you free. The Bible tells us God words, God's word heals. Right. Exactly what I'm saying. So when you say out this loud, expect healing. Expect healing. I'm not even kidding today. Expect healing because God words, God's word heals. God's word saves. God's word delivers. The Bible tells us he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them. That's it. And, and, and God is saying, have I not commanded you? Have I not already given you my word? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of all their destruction. So when you're, when you're speaking the word tonight, expect healing. If you're watching from hospital, speak the word and expect healing. He sends his word and heals them. The Bible also tells us that God listens to his word to do it. Can you believe that? And it says that there are angels present for those who believe. Be it unto you as you believe. For those who believe, for the believer, for the, the Christian, for somebody who has received God already. This is our stance. So tonight, let's believe. Let's believe in what God's told us. God said his word heals. Let's speak it out and believe for healing. God said that angels listen to his word and then activate the promises. Let's believe that and let's speak that out. So go ahead, my friends. Let's read this out together. Okay, so this is so let's just quickly say a prayer together. Remember that as we're praying, there's something really powerful about praying. God said that every promise, remember we said everything we read out today is a promise from God. And every promise of God is simply met with a yes and an amen when you are in Christ. So today, and please type in right now, if you're Christian, say I'm Christian, type that in. And if you're not Christian, don't even worry about it. I love that you're here, stay with us. Stay with us, um, if you, this is making you feel better, stay with us, then we, God's got a great message for you. So today, remember um, that, that, that we're, we're, we're really, to, as, as if you're a Christian, then you have a right to this promise and to every promise of God. God says, um, in his word that every promise of God is a resounding yes and amen if you are in Christ. So the moment you're Christian, the Bible actually says you have a whole new life filled with promises, 
filled with favor, filled with my blessings. If you are in Christ, the Bible in 2 Corinthians 5, that's probably the first word, verse I've quoted, right? In 2 Corinthians 5, the Bible tells us that if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation. He is an entirely new person. The old has gone, the new has come. Let's go in a new way to God tonight. All right, let's let's forget the old. Even if even if you had some old experience with prayers and say, you know, Michael, I've tried praying. I don't believe God hears my prayers. Can I invite you to go in a new spirit today to God? As we speak this word, let's go in a new spirit with Him. As, as we, because God wants to be our Father. Even though God is a healer, God is a savior, God is um, a powerful healing God, a creator God. God wants to be known as Father. When Jesus walked the planet, all he said, the, the, the one name he constantly called God is your Father. Your Father wants to bless you. The disciple says, help us to pray. He said, pray like this, our Father. And what does that mean? When we say the word Father, that's the spirit God wants. He wants you to approach him like father not like oh god you know there's some people that will shout prayers and again i'm not knocking that if that's working for you then go ahead but if you're somebody that doesn't feel like god is listening or you feel the need to shout or you feel uh, and and that's all good by the way people in the bible have shouted out prayers um but if you feel like god's not listening god is listening right now because tonight we're going to address him the way Jesus addressed him as father. So the moment we say father, we know he listens because we are in Christ and we are a new creation. We are in his son. That's what the Bible tells us today. We're in his son. And where is his son today? Right next to him. See, if, if, if you don't know this already as a believer, you're in two places today. You're walking the planet, but you're really close to God. So a lot of times if you're shouting. God's like, why are you shouting? I'm right here. I'm right here and I'm listening to you. Just talk to me. So if you believe truly that Jesus is in you, then all you got to do is whisper. If you believe that he's in your heart, then all you got to do is whisper and he hears every whisper. So I can see some people saying, um, my dad says, pray for Anthony Braganza, uh, who's, who has the virus. We'll definitely do that in a moment. We, we'll talk, we'll pray for Conception Rodericks. We're going to pray for him as well. Cecil Rodericks, father and mother. Thank you for those requests. Um, Let's let's continue to pray for them. Let's start with a prayer right now. Let's talk to him as father. Let's approach, approach him with a spirit of sonship. The Bible tells us uh, we've been given a spirit of sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father, by which we call God, Daddy. Abba is Daddy, Dad. Um, you know, um, so, 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 so when we're calling him out today, let's feel like a child. So if you've not related to him like a child, I think he's inviting somebody today very powerfully to speak to him like a child, somebody who hasn't had their prayers answered recently. Uh, I, I just get this feeling that he's calling somebody to just say, hey, Father, just use the word Father today. So can we start right now and just say, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everybody gathered here today and everybody that will listen later uh, to a recording of this or, or just join in a prayer session. We just come to you in a spirit of sonship. We are your children and we thank you that every promise that we speak out tonight as we pray is met with a resounding yes and amen, which means you hear and you answer our prayers with yes. It's always a yes from you. It is always a yes from you. So today we just receive every prayer answered, every request met, every person we pray for healed. We declare them healed and we just receive, Father, your anointing, your flow of the Holy Spirit so that all the right things may be talked about, all the right prayers. We just, you know, lift our prayers to you and then that we'll, we'll just pray prayers that, that, um, that are in accordance with your will. I thank you that it's your will to heal. It's your will to set free. It's your will to save, deliver, touch, restore. Um, and, and, and we just receive all your promises today. We receive you touching, Lord Jesus. We receive you touching the people of Goa. We receive you touching everybody that's in a hospital bed right now with the coronavirus. We receive you protecting your people. And the Bible tells us how we overcome. We overcome the works of the enemy by the word of our testimony when we speak it out loud and by the blood of Jesus. So today we just cover everybody in Goa with the blood of Jesus. We just pray, Lord, Father, your amazing protection upon them, your incredible protection upon them. Be with them. And for those who are in a hospital bed today, for their families, we just pray your covering of protection. We just pray peace in that situation, peace in that hospital. We just pray that there'll be something tangible, something incredible where your presence will be felt and your presence will be just just manifested in those in those beds and in that hospital. 
Lord, we just cover everybody that's that's going through this this disease. We just cover them with your precious blood and we just pray your protection upon them. We pray your hand of healing upon them, Lord. Lord Jesus, we just pray your hand of he healing upon them. I thank you that you are here to touch, heal, restore, set free, cast out every every sickness and heal your children and deliver them and bless them and restore them. For this is your will. We receive heaven on earth right now in this session. We receive heaven on earth for people watching and for their families. We receive your healing, your anointing, your flow, your miracles. For you're a God of miracles. Thank you. In Jesus' in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all you got to do is say amen. And you can type in amen if you like. And you can shout out amen where you're watching. Um, remember that for the believer... Amen is a very powerful word. It means you are agreeing with God. It means you're saying, yes, this is what God says. This is what I am believing today. This is what I choose to believe. Thank you for all the incredible comments. Manny, I love your encouragement, buddy. Um, says he is willing. He is absolutely willing. Uh, like I said, there's. remember that when you, when you want to know what God is like and does God heal, he always heals because the Bible tells us Jesus is the perfect image of God. He's literally the express image of God. He is exactly like the Father. In fact, somebody in the Bible, one of his disciples says, can you show us the Father, Lord? That's all we need. Show us the Father. And he turned to him and said, Philip, you've been with me all this time. And I imagine Jesus talking like that, right? Philip, I, you, uh, you've been with me all this time and you're asking, me, you're asking me to show you the Father. Don't you know that I'm in the Father and my Father's in me? If you don't believe, at least believe because of the works I do. And what are the works he did? He went about healing, setting free all those who are pressed by the devil. Now, let's talk about this very, uh, very quickly because I don't want us to be naive. The Bible tells us clearly that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What is this virus doing? It's stealing, it's killing, and it's destroying. It's as simple as that. Let's not complicate the matter anymore. The, the, the virus is stealing our health. It's stealing our peace. It's stealing our family lives, right? It's stealing, it's stealing from people. It is, uh, it's killing people, right? And it's destroying families. It's destroying communities. It's destroying peace. So remember that when, when, when the Bible tells us clearly the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, you can be sure that if you can see this happening, it is not God. God said, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now that's gorgeous. I love I just can can you just say that again? Life more abundantly. Where you're standing right now, where you're sitting right now, just say life more abundantly. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive your life more abundantly. Now, why I'm asking you to say this is because God said, I came that you might have it. So today, if you're not having it, you need to have it. You need to receive it. You need to claim it. It is yours. Um, Pastor Prince talked about it in a very powerful moment today where he said. He said, the enemy is almost sitting on your inheritance. They're sitting on, um, on your healing. They're sitting um, on your peace. Um, so if you're not experiencing peace, joy, happiness, reject all these things from your life and start to believe right again. Fix your focus on him. Turn to him. That's what we're doing right now. So together, um, we've, done, we've, we've, we've talked so much and let's just quickly get into the psalm right now. Right? We're going to pray Psalm 91 together. So let's go through it together. And as you're speaking, remember that angels are listening. As you're speaking, remember, we'll, we'll say at the end, we'll say amen emphatically because that means I receive all these promises of God. Now remember that Psalm 91, the one we're going to read out tonight, is something you can speak right there. You can speak right now. You can speak it over your relatives in hospital. You can speak it over your family. You can, If you get your kids to learn it, how powerful is that going to be? Um, it's just it's just something that you can pray over your family. If you don't know what to pray, pick up Psalm 91 and pray it over your family. Say, Lord, I'm praying this over my family. I'm praying this over my kid. I'm praying this over my kids. I'm praying this over my life, over my own family. I'm praying this over my family, um, you know, who, who I'm not with. The Bible tells us God is not limited by time, by space, by distance. God lives outside time, outside space, outside distance. So if you're sitting somewhere in the U.S. and you have family in Goa, if you're sitting somewhere and you're thinking, I can't do much, God can move right now in any, you know, any time you tell him to. Let's turn to him. Let's make this moment and this time count. So let's do it together. One, two, three, let's go. First verse, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, amen, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let's do it together. 
Picture yourself under that shadow tonight. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. So good. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Stop. From the perilous pestilence, from the virus that kills. Here we go. A real promise from God just telling you, I will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Another beautiful way to say this is just saying, I will say of the Lord, you, Lord, are my refuge and my fortress, my God, and you I trust. Make it personal if you want. Surely you deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Because he said, have I not commanded you? You know, um, I listen for my word to do it. So speak his word and say, Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. Put it on him. My God, in you I trust. Surely you deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Let's do it together. And from the perilous pestilence, from the deadly virus. You will cover me with your feathers. Let's do it together. And under your wings, I take refuge. How beautiful is that? How beautiful. Let's stop there. And I hope you got a picture of something of, of wings over you, of protection over you. This is your protection in the midst of the storm when everybody's going through a virus situation. This is your protection. Make the Lord your protection. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So these are weapons that God's giving you. He says, "My his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Let's do it together. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. And you can make that an eye. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Keep speaking it out. A thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Make this about you. Yes, indeed. Make it about you. Make it about your family. Make it about your situation. And then tell others to do the same. Tell others to do the same because this is God listening to his word. So speak that out. Let's do it one more time. A thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand. It shall not come near me. Only with my eyes will I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made, because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. There shall no evil befall me, and no plague come near your near my dwelling. Amen. Stop there. Just stop for a moment. Keeps you safe from the plague. Keeps you safe from sickness. Keeps you safe from evil. Let's go to verse eleven. For you give your angels charge over me, to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will trample on the lion and the cobra. The young lion and serpent I will trample underfoot. Because you set your love upon me, you did, because I set my love upon you, you deliver me. You set me on high because I know your name. When I call to you, you answer me. In trouble you are with me. You deliver me and honor me. With long life you satisfy me and show me your salvation. There's a lot of promises in that. And let's just say amen together. Just say amen together. because, and, and what you just did is you prayed a very powerful psalm that talks about God protecting you from evil. He says, um, you know, he says, I, I will make sure no plague enters you, enters your home. I will make sure that you are protected because you make me your refuge and your fortress. And what that means is you're, you're calling on God to be your refuge for your family, your fortress. Now, whether a cyclone hits, whether, whether sickness is hitting, remember that you are making God your refuge. You are declaring your faith in a God that can protect you and your family. So don't just, so there are prayers that can be prayed. There are, there is the word of God that God never, never, never. And, and, and you know that God keeps his word. God is a God that keeps his word, that keeps his promises. So speak them out over your family, speak them out over your children, speak them out over your loved ones. Pray Psalm 91 every day, my friends. This is going to be so good for you. So teach a friend. Um, share with somebody if you, if, you don't, if you don't know about this already. Because there are so many promises and, and so many of them speaking about a virus, about a perilous pestilence, about, um, about, about something that, that, that stalks in darkness. The pestilence that walks in darkness we see this virus mutating now we see that virus is undetectable we see that there are no symptoms showing up here is god telling you that this is something that's walking in darkness i will protect you from it and he says no evil will befall you so if you want to talk about other things whether it's a cyclone whether it's something he says no evil will befall you and no calamity come near your dwelling 
there's a gorgeous story that I'll never forget about a lady um, that was going through, I think, I think it was World War II, to be honest. And, and she prayed uh, Psalm 91 and, 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 and there, were, there were bombs literally dropping across the city and there were grenades being thrown. And, and we're, we're seeing even Israel right now go through something like that where there's shots fired and there are things happening. And, and, and this lady prayed Psalm 91 and said, you know what? Um, the Bible says that God doesn't slumber or sleep. So if you're not going to sleep, I'm going to go to sleep, God, and I'm going to trust that you're going to protect me. And she woke up to literally her house being absolutely in order and everything around her complete rubble. And, and that's exactly what the psalm says. The psalm says a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. It will not come near you. Today, speak that out. Say, the virus may, may fall at my side. The virus may affect 10,000 at my right hand. It will not come near me. Remember, be it unto you as you believe, not be it unto everybody who doesn't believe, right? So be it unto you as you believe. I'm just smiling because I can see my daughter on Instagram now watching. I love you, Kristen. <laughs> so there we go. So anyway, um, I'm really, really pleased to have all of you again, having joined us. Again, if you're joining us later today, we're really just making this about praying for God, praying for India as well. So once again, pray that psalm any time in the day. P pray twice or thrice a day if you want. Whenever you're feeling stressed about something, speak it out. And there's just such a power to speaking God's word because you're speaking his promises over your life and you're speaking his promises into your life and you're trusting him and you're trusting him. And my daughter just pointed and Mia and Mark are watching. So I love all of you, Mia, Mark and Kristen. Um, so anyway, once again, we pray for let's let's quickly um, let's let's talk about one more thing that you can do before we close out tonight. Again, Psalm 91 tells us about how we speak God's word. Another thing that is absolutely powerful is this. And if you've got um, a cracker next to you, and if you've got a grape juice next to you, then go get it. Um, you know, then, then let's do this together. But if you haven't, um, then all you need is a little bit of a cracker. Doesn't matter what. Could be a cream cracker. Could be a, a little bit of water. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Uh, these are symbols, but they're symbols of God's power. So um, there is something. There is a reason that no matter what. Um, you know, part of Christianity, it doesn't matter. There is something very powerful about receiving the Holy Communion, but really believing in what was done for you at the cross. So there's something very powerful about healing, and uh, we're going to turn to it together, all right? So just qu quickly, um, so we're going to go together to Isaiah 53. So you can actually go together with me to Isaiah 53 right now before we do anything, and let's really pray um, together and let's say a little prayer before we before we before we do this together okay let's say a prayer one more time this is really about a prayer session right so really let's pray for everybody in india today father we just pray for your children and just for for more and more to just turn to you to look away from their circumstances to look away from everything they're going through we pray for everybody all the names that have been popped into this chat today for anthony briganza um I'm just going through it very quickly. Conception, Rodericks, for Cecil's father, mother, for all the families that have lost people from this virus and all the families that are believing that they will be healed. Um, remember that, thank you so much, some great comments again. There's power in the body and blood of Jesus. There's power in Jesus' finished work. I love that. Thank you for, for sharing these comments and for encouraging Remember that as we as we um, we're talking about the Holy Communion today, this is a topic that we could talk about for hours. But there is there is not uh, we won't do an hour. In fact, we'll do whatever we can, when, and we're really going to just make this about praying for people um, who are affected and for people that may need it today. So whoever you are today, if you want to join us, let's do this together. Now the reason we do this, uh, there is something really powerful because when Jesus ordained that we should do this. The Holy Communion. He actually took bread and he said, this is my body. Eat. This is my body given for you. Now, a lot of the times we forget that when Jesus walked the earth, you don't see one story where he had a cold or he had 
or he caught you know pneumonia or he took a day off or you know give me let's let's do a couple of days uh we'll just you know give me three days off and you know i'll take a sick leave here today there's not one thing so obviously jesus was not just giving us his body for no reason when he gave us his body he said this is my body take eat this is my body given for you so when you're eating remember that you're receiving when you say jesus i'm receiving your body you said take eat this is my body i'm receiving all the help that's in your amazing body that's in your incredible body and and um there's an incredible verse that tells us we are members of his flesh and of his bones jesus said take eat this is my body another another verse it says those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will live because of me they will live in me they will live because of me Wow, that's a very, very powerful verse. So if you want to Google that, you can go ahead and Google that. I'm never one to say that I'm an expert. No, I know every verse and whatever, but I, 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 I receive the words that I'm given and I just speak them out. So Jesus said, you know, those who want to, those who want to live because of me, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will live because of me. Now that's very powerful because what he's saying is, and then he said, take, eat, this is my body later on. Take, eat, this is my body. Uh, this is my this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. If anybody is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. So let's um, so remember why Jesus what Jesus did for us. Let's talk about what Jesus did for us at the cross. Um, why we said let's go to Isaiah fifty three is because we're going to read from this from this verse right now, because we want to know exactly what we're doing when it comes to the Holy Communion. And there is probably no other verse that describes uh, the Holy Communion as Isaiah 53. So let's talk about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Isaiah 53 talks about the Messiah. The whole thing talks about Jesus. So if you're reading Isaiah 53, you're literally going to just picture Jesus right now. And it says, I can read from the beginning. It says, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord, which is Jesus, been revealed? He grows. He grew up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. It's talking about Jesus on the cross. So just see Jesus right now before you take this communion, before you take the body and the bread, uh, the, the the body and the blood, the bread and the cup. See Jesus on the cross. No beauty in him. In fact, the Bible tells us he was marred beyond human comprehension. He was marred beyond. He was so disfigured on the cross that you could not recognize him. And there was a reason he went through that. Jesus wasn't murdered. Jesus wasn't killed. Jesus went willingly. Many of you typed in, I am willing. That's how willing he was. He went to, to the cross for you. Why did Jesus go through the cross? I'm sure we'll talk about it sometimes. But he went to the cross to put an end to sin everywhere and to the power of sin everywhere. And those who believe and receive what he did immediately become a new creation. They become a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. There is a new way of life for you, but you need to receive it. You need to believe and receive. And that's and it's as simple as that. Again, if you joined us and in, in you're in, in, your, in your different faith, this is not about religion. It never was. Uh, it was not about being Jewish. It never was. Jesus said, Jesus came to save the world. When, when, when Jesus was interviewed by a Jew and said, what have you come to show us? What have you, why have you come? And he says, I came to have that they might, that my children might have life and have it more abundantly. And he said, for God so loves the world. He said, God loves the world in this way. God loves the world. If you're right now in the world, you're part of that promise. God loves the world in this way muslim catholic hindu doesn't matter god loves the world in this way he sent his one and only son that whoever believe in him believe on him believe in him should not perish should not die but have everlasting life jesus said i come that they might have life and have it more abundantly have everlasting life live forever so my friends when we're talking about Jesus and what he did on the cross, he came so that we would not perish, so that we would not experience death, but that we would have everlasting life. You see, sin came into the world and sin, and we can see the effects of sin in the world today. We don't have to look very far. We can see sickness. We can see disease. We can see virus. We can see all this nonsense that came in because of sin. 
But when Jesus hung on the cross, the cross avails for all time. You see, God is eternal. So Jesus, who was God and who took on the flesh of man, or who, who took on the image of man, he went to the cross and he carried every sin that every man in every race and every faith would commit in any part of their life. And he did it once and for all. The Bible tells us that by one sacrifice, this man perfected forever and cleansed completely. I love that. Can you, can you just focus on those words? He has perfected forever and cleansed completely those being sanctified. You know what that means? It means if you're a Christian, you are perfect in the eyes of your father. He has perfected you forever. Not until your next sin. Not until next week. He has perfected you forever. I'm going to even give you the verse. By one sacrifice. He has perfected Hebrews 10, 14 by one sacrifice, by one single offering of himself. He has perfected forever and completely cleansed those being sanctified, those being made holy, those being uh, made, you know, made holy. So Christians are continually being made holy. How do we do that? We get into his word. The, uh, the Bible tells us, don't be conformed to the world but be renewed or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, this is huge for us because here's another incentive for us to get into God's word daily. Um, don't just be conformed to what the world is saying. Don't just be buying in. If, if somebody says, oh my God, I don't know when this virus will end. Yes, you don't know when the virus will end, but don't just keep saying that because it's not good for you. It's not, it's not your portion. Um, when, when, people are, when people are saying, I don't see an end to this, that's not for you. You do see an end. You know the end from the beginning. You know, Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. You know me, don't you? And if you know the beginning and, and the end, then don't say to somebody, oh, I don't know when will this will end. You know what? You know the end. The end is Jesus. The beginning was Jesus. The end is Jesus. The beginning was God. The end was God. Um, it's, this is not for you to just repeat. So, so the Bible tells us clearly, don't just be conformed to what the world is saying but be transformed by renewing your mind. How do we do that? Through God's word. So let's renew our mind today and renew our hearts and just, and, just, and just look at God and what he's saying to us in his word. So as we continue to read Isaiah 50, 53, here's the most incredible part. It says, he's despised and rejected by men. On the cross, Jesus was despised and rejected. He was spit upon. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Jesus went through complete shame so that you would not go through shame today. Jesus was spit upon so you don't have to be spit upon today. Let's see what else he did. Verse 4. Surely, surely, not maybe. Surely he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. And we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. We thought he was having a punishment for himself. But listen to verse 4 again. Surely he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. You know why? Because he had no sickness. He gave us his healthy body. He said, this is my body. Take, eat. This is my body. So he's given us. So he had to take our sicknesses. Surely he took our sicknesses and carried our pains. And yet we thought he was suffering for his own sins. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, means our sin. He was bruised or he was crushed for our iniquities, our rebellion. The punishment for our peace was upon him in that moment. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. It is done. It is the past tense. In that moment, we are healed for all eternity because his blood is the blood of God. He is perfect. He, he, is, he, he is God. He, he didn't make any, he didn't hide it. He said, he is God. So God has eternal blood. His blood avails for all time. So remember that if you want to be healed today, you believe that it, you were already healed 2,000 years ago on that cross. The cross avails for us today and it will avail for us tomorrow. You can take communion today Tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now, whatever it is, because it avails to you in that moment. The cross is outside time. 
Surely he, was, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So if you're going through grief and sorrow, he took it for you. He has borne, another translation says, he bore all our sicknesses and carried all our pains. If, and that includes COVID-19, my friends. That includes this nasty virus. He has taken it so you don't have to go through it. So you can be healed from it. How are you healed? By his stripes, we are healed. By the stripes he took on, on his back, we are healed. It says that, that Jesus experienced, uh, his body was marred beyond comprehension. His face was so disfigured that people could not believe what he was going through. But he bore it. And it tells us he bore it how? Like a lamb to the slaughter. Um, and as a sheep before its shares is silent, he opened not his mouth. He opened not his mouth. So my friend, remember that Jesus has borne the cross for you. Jesus didn't die a normal death. D Jesus died a horrific death. He died a horrific death. He was not just, he didn't just go to the cross, but he went through intense whipping and scourging. In fact, if you watch the movie, The Passion of the Christ, they show Jesus being being whipped and crushed. And that would not happen to every prisoner, by the way. It would not. Um, you know, it was either they lashed you and they let you go, or you were taken straight and nailed on the cross or crucified because crucifixion was prevalent in those days with the Romans for murderers, for, for thieves, um, for, depending on the crime. But Jesus had both. You know why? Because he was fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 was years and years and years before his time. But Isaiah spoke about a Messiah who would come. The Son of God would come and he would carry the sin of the entire world and the sickness of the entire world at the right time. The Bible tells us at the perfect time, God sent his son. At the, at the, at the right time, God sent his son. And guess what? Today, that thing that he did, that sacrifice he, he did for you was, was all for you, for your healing. Remember, he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So let's right now receive his life. When Jesus said, eat, this is my body, and, and when he said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, right, will live because of me, will have life because of me. So we're going to have life because of him right now as we partake of his body and blood, of what he asked us to do. And, and Jesus says, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death. Um, what does is, what is proclaiming his death mean? There's an incredible story where, um, uh, where the Israelites, God's chosen people, and today we believe that we, we are God's chosen people, um, you know, uh, those who believe in Christ are chosen by him, are set apart by him, are his children. And the Bible tells us of an incredible story that when, when his children were being attacked, uh, the prophet Samuel sacrificed a lamb. And, and John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. In the old days, when you wanted to come to God, you had to bring a lamb, a perfect lamb. And what would happen is you would bring this lamb to a priest and you would put your hands on the lamb, which says... Uh, I believe that all my sin is going into the Lamb, and I believe the righteousness of the Lamb is being transferred to me. So God will see me now as righteous, and the Lamb, but the Lamb has to die. So the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And what that means, a lot of the times we tend to not buy into healing because we say, Oh my gosh, but I'm so sinful, but I have a bad habit, I have an, I have an addiction. Remember that, that on that cross, Jesus became your Lamb. Jesus became the perfect Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. That means He took away all the sins that would be committed by every man on the planet. He took it in that moment. So on that cross, He became our Lamb and we put our hands on Him and our sin went into Him. But His righteousness went to us. Just the same as in the old days, the righteousness of the Lamb. But the only thing is this Lamb's righteousness is forever. By one offering, He has perfected forever. Don't you dare feel imperfect he has perfected you forever he has completely cleaned those who are being sanctified those who are being sanctified just means that those are being more holy every day as they learn more about god as they look away the, from the world uh, they're not being conformed to the world but they're being transformed by renewing their minds by saying this is who i am i am in christ sickness should not be touching me sickness cannot touch me so remember my friends that jesus went through the cross so that he could carry your sin, but he gave you his righteousness in that moment forever for your whole life. So what does that mean? That means that he was punished so you would not be punished. 
He took, he bore your sicknesses, Isaiah 53 tells us, surely he has borne your sicknesses and carried your pains and by his stripes you have been healed. So today we're going to partake right now for everybody going through COVID-19, everybody going through it in India, everybody going through it in Goa. Um, we just, we're just going to partake for them. We're gonna, and, and today I want you to just partake for somebody on behalf of someone. If you know somebody in the hospital that's struggling for yourself as well, it's always also for yourself, but you know, say a little prayer to God. So, you know, um, just, just tell him who this is for. So let's do this together. Um, remember that he said when you, he, Jesus said, my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So remember that today, if you've got a cracker with you, and if you've got some grape juice with you, then that's all you need because we're proclaiming his death. So what happened when Samuel killed the lamb and God's, and God's people, the Israelites, were, were losing the battle? Samuel killed the lamb and it says God thundered from heaven and discomforted the enemies. He stressed the enemies out. He threw them into confusion so much so they started to kill each other. They started to kill each other. So what that means, is, and, 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 Israel, and the Israelites looked back and, and didn't have to do anything. And they, and they just saw, they, had, they just stood still and saw God suddenly just deliver them. Something very powerful happens when you partake of communion. He says, those who, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death until I come back. As we do this, we're proclaiming his death over our family. We're proclaiming, we're raising, we're putting the cross in front of everything else. We're looking away from everything else and we're looking to him. Right now, we're looking to you, Lord Jesus. We are looking to you to heal, to touch, restore. You are the original healer. You are the only one that heals. You are the God that heals willingly. He says, I am willing. Turn to me and I will heal you. Turn to me and I will heal you. So today we're turning to you, Lord Jesus. We're just turning to you and we just ask that you would heal everyone who needs healing. Everyone who chooses to believe only needs to say, I believe, Lord, and I receive this healing. So when you're partaking with a loved one, just ask them to just, just ask them to take a little bread, a little water, or a little communion cup if you need to, or a little grape juice. And that symbolizes his body filled with his life. And that symbolizes his blood. And that's what we're going to partake of. His body is perfectly healthy. His blood is perfectly healthy. So we're partaking of the perfect health of the perfect Lamb of God. We're partaking of the perfect body and blood of the one and only Son of God. That's what we're doing tonight, okay? So we're going to do something very powerful. We're proclaiming His death. We're looking to the cross. And you'll see just how God can thunder from heaven and discomfort the COVID-19. How He can thunder from heaven and discomfort your enemies that are attacking you. And discomfort any enemy that's brought, that's stolen, killed, or destroyed something in your life. He's going to do that tonight, and I'm believing in a very powerful, miraculous healing for somebody watching tonight. I'm just declaring it, that somebody, somebody's going to recover and be completely restored uh, and completely healed tonight as we place our trust in Him. Let's say to Him, Lord Jesus, I just want to thank You for everybody listening as we partake of communion together. I thank You that You are here and we're speaking to you. I thank you that you've given us the bread and, and, and the cup so we can partake of your perfect flesh and your perfect blood. Let's do this together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your body so filled with divine life, health, and healing. I thank you that surely you bore all our sicknesses and carried all our pains. All our sicknesses and all our pains. You were wounded because of our sin, because you were carrying our sin. You were crushed because of our rebellion. The punishment that was designed to bring us peace was upon you. The punishment for our peace was upon you. You took the punishment and that made us whole. By your stripes, I have been healed. Amen. Go ahead and eat. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your precious blood that has removed every sin from my life. Because there is no more sin in my life, sickness has no power over me. Death has no power over me. COVID-19 has no power over me. I receive your protection by this blood. 
I receive my healing and health by this blood. I receive your life and life more abundantly. A life as the child of God. And I receive all the promises of God of protection, provision, prosperity, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink. Amen. Amen. So I just believe that we're going to see incredible things happen. Um, and hopefully this will go out to as many people as, as it can. And as many people as, as need to hear it. Uh, but I will keep this session on. Um, hopefully keep this on Instagram as well. And it'll be available on Facebook. Um, so if you found this helpful and if you were blessed by the session, hopefully you'll share that out. Um, to anybody that wants to join anyone that wants to join so before it gets too long let's let's close out uh, but there's a couple of things that I'm just just pressing on my heart that I want to speak to you about one of them is remember we said we're taking time to look away from things and look to him he's the only one that can heal he's the only one that can help he's the only one that restores all the time he is always willing Remember, there were two incidents that I just want to remind you of before we close out our time together. And I hope this helps you at least to renew your mind in the word. The Bible tells us of two incidents. The Bible tells us of a time where the Israelites were walking through the wilderness and they were bitten by serpents. The Bible tells us they, they were bitten by poisonous serpents. And, and, and God asked Moses to do something kind of strange or what, what might have appeared strange. And he said, Moses... I want you to make a bronze serpent and I want you to hold it up on a pole and mount it on a pole and, and hold it up. And if anybody looks at that bronze serpent, that person will be healed. A lot of the times God makes us do something because God lives outside time. And it was a very, very powerful thing for us to remember because God was when, when Moses lifted the serpent on that pole, it looked like a snake on a cross. And if you look at the symbol for paramedics today and healthcare professionals, they have a snake on a cross. What was God trying to tell us? God, God was trying to tell us that our sins, our sicknesses were born by him. Our sins were born by him. Remember Isaiah 53, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. So when we see that he has borne our sicknesses, they can't be in our body. If we see that he bore the COVID-19, it shouldn't be allowed to touch us, to harm us, to heal us. And that was where the power lied. You know, that, that was where the power, all the power came from there, from just believing, from the Israelites believing that they were healed. Remember that they were facing snake bites and he said, make a bronze snake. So the same thing that was plaguing them, if they could see it on Jesus's body and believe surely or, or, or on that snake and believe that he bore the sickness and carried the pain, so a lot of people think, says, oh my God, but are you saying that Jesus is a snake? My friend, remember that the Bible in 2 Corinthians 5 tells us he made the only one who knew no sin to be sin for us, to become sin for us, so that you and I may be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, I want you to just focus on that passage before we close out tonight, because in that passage is your healing. He says that God made the only one who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin, my friend. He came beautiful. He came untouched, unspoiled. But on that cross, he carried the sins of the world. He carried, he carried everybody's sin. Everybody. Think about the most horrific sins. He carried them. He said, I'm carrying. He, he carried the, whole, the sin of all the world. Sin has the power that brings disease curse sickness poverty lack that's what we're seeing in the world my friend jesus says don't be conformed by the world but be transformed by renewing your mind with my word so let's look to him today let's take our focus off our sickness take our focus off our disease even if you're facing covid right now and you have symptoms don't look at the symptoms look to him who bore your symptoms and you will be made well my friend that's a promise that is god's word that's not me making stuff up because 2 corinthians tells us but he made him, he made him the only one who knew no sin to be sin for you and me so that we, listen to this, that knew no righteousness might be made the righteousness of God in him. My friend, God sees you perfectly righteous, which means you have 
a right to every blessing. God sees you in Jesus. The Bible tells us if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Don't start acting like you that this sickness applies to you. If you have the psychology that this sickness can catch anybody, my friend, be it unto you as you believe. But instead of that, don't be conformed to what the world is telling you. Be transformed by renewing your mind. If you can't, if you don't want to talk to people about this thing, then don't don't pick up the phone. You know, just say, hey, I can't talk about this. No one, you know, will, will disrespect you for that. Um, don't just join the conversation. Don't just keep speaking words of, 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 of COVID and sickness and depression in your life. Just be transformed by picking up his word and saying, you made me a promise. You said that Jesus on that cross bore my sickness and carried my pain. Jesus was made a judged serpent on my behalf because he became my sin and he carried all my sickness. So today I am completely healed. I'm completely free. I'm completely redeemed. I'm completely set free from the sickness. So today see the COVID. If you're going through COVID, see the COVID-19 attacking his body on the cross and receive your healing. Say, Lord, you took it so I don't have to go through it. By your stripes, I am healed. By your stripes, I am healed. Say it again and again. Meditate on his word. By your stripes, Lord, I am completely healed. And receive that healing. Receive that health. Receive that wholeness. And, 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 you will, and, and, and it said, and the story ended with, anybody that looked to him was saved. Every single person that looked to him will be saved. The Bible tells us everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I'd like to quickly just extend an invitation to anybody watching who wants to put his trust in Jesus, who wants to look away from himself and look to him who became sin for you so that you could be right with God, so that you could be in Christ and have a brand new life. The old is gone, the new has come. If you want to, and if you feel called in your heart to do it, you can just say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you went to the cross for me and you carried all the sins of my life. And you can just repeat after me. You carried all the sins of my life so that I would be fully righteous in God's eyes. I believe that you carried all my sickness and bore all my pains. And by your stripes, I've been healed. And I just received this new life right now in you, filled with divine health, healing, wholeness, and all the promises of God are just a simple yes and amen. Lord Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior and guide me through this new life. In Jesus' name. And all you got to do is say, Amen. My friend, God bless you. I really do hope you were blessed by the session. I want to thank you for joining me. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight. Um, and, and, and I wish you well. And I wish you all God's promises and love and grace that they just poured into your life tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you and have a great night.